When I first um, saw the, a picture of that car, I thought, jeez, I'm surprised it didn't break down. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, the, the, the one breakdown we had was actually in South Africa. We hadn't even left. And what had happened was one of the fuel lines uh, was perished and fuel started leaking into the engine. And, I mean, you don't want, you know, volatile substances all over a hot engine. But we were, we, we were able to fix that. And it was a Sunday, but it's quite an exciting story. How we, it was literally one of those things, went from place to place to place, just trying to find some more fuel hose. Eventually, I got to a place that was closed, but the owner was getting into his car. And I ran up, and I was like banging on the door, and he saw this. So he came out, and we were able to get the fuel hose. So we were able to fix the car. So we were able to leave the country when we needed to. Um, you know how things all just kind of fall into place? Um, wow. Yeah, more, more to the point is in northern Kenya, there's a there's the road. That was the thing that we were nervous about the whole time. From Nairobi going up to the border and then into up towards Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. And um, yeah, it's, I think the car was probably too heavy with the three of us and all the kit that we were carrying, you know, just in case we had toolboxes and extra fuel and that sort of thing. So the back suspension really took a bruise or a, a, a bashing and, and the shocks broke. So there was a point when we were just driving. I mean, we had nothing else to do, so we just turned up Bob Marley, opened the windows, and cruised at like 10 k's an hour to the next village, where, where we were able to find someone who knew enough about something to show us someone else who had a, you know, a little part that we could kind of get by with until we were able to to fully replace them. Geez, was your friend excited to get rid of the BM when you got to Munich? <laughs> um, quite the opposite, actually, Jen. He was. He was, he was a bit emotional about it. I mean, the way that the story started, so he's, his name is Mike. Um, he's now in his 50s. And uh, so let me just introduce the team. There's, there's Ian and Rowan and I, who are all friends from university. Uh, we've been mates for, you know, for ages now. And we, we just really wanted to do this, this trip, um, a trip into Africa. Ian's father was in the Air Force, and Ian and Mike Mike, uh, sorry, um, Ian's father and Mike, being the pilot, they were friends from back in the day. So Mike's always been close to their family. Uh, then one day, Mike was sitting with Ian having a couple of drinks, and he said, um, you know, I've got this car, which well, I should actually fill you in before that. So what happened was Mike was the pilot, and then 24, 25 years ago, him and his friend were going, coming back from a wedding. He was sleeping in the back, had an accident, and Mike was paralyzed from the waist down. So that really changes your life. You know, you're, a, you're an ace pilot. You really got the whole world going for you, and the next thing you can't walk. So he bought this car the year later, um, brand new, and it was, it was a way that he was able to reconnect to the world and get his mobility back and kind of live a life, a social life again, you know. Um, so there's, there's the sentiments. I mean, this is 24 years. He's been all over the country. He's, he's put over 300,000 kilometers on it. And then since he got another car, he um, would lend this out to his friends and people who needed it. So that's what had been happening for the last couple of years until it was close to 450,000 Ks on the clock. And, um, and then the last guy using it left to go overseas. So it was just sitting there in Cape Town, sort of, you know, wasting away. And Mike said to Ian on this night over beers, he said, you know what, Ian, what I'd really like to do, I don't want to sell it or give it away. It's, it's too important for that. I want to take it back to BMW, give them the keys and say, guys, thank you very much for, for a fantastic car that is, that's done so much for me. Um, and Ian said, cool, I'll do it. And then he came to me that night and he said, you know, this is what Mike's offered. Like, you know, the, this is the challenge, not an offer. So, um, yeah, immediately I said, well, when are we leaving? And then we got in touch with <laughs> some of the other guys and before we knew it, we had this expedition planned. Well, we had it committed, so then we had to plan the thing and make it happen. Wow. Now, what did it feel like to, to finally get to the BMW headquarters? First of all, what did they say when you got there? <laughs> They're like, no ways. You guys are here. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, oh, man, it, it felt incredible. It was, it was the pinnacle of a three-and-a-half-month trip. Well, not, not a trip. It was a, it was a journey and an adventure, and obviously so much has gone into it that just to get there and knowing that nothing else could get in our way. We, were, we had reached our goal, our destination. I mean, that, that's just a feeling of satisfaction, of, of appreciation, 
and and just a, a deep sense of joy and uh, that in itself is inspiring and that's what we wanted to do as well is to inspire people to to venture into Africa specifically because it's got a bit of a you know scary uh, connotation but um, you know just to go out there and do whatever they want to do you can do it if you put your mind to it so when we got to BMW they were thrilled to see us. They had set up a party, like a, a welcome party, and the journalists were there. They took us on a tour of the production plant, so we saw these, you know, brand new cars being made. They can make a new car in a day from scratch. What? Yeah, like M4 or something, you know, hectic that they will sell for millions of bucks one oh day. And then we saw the recycling plant, which was brutal. Um, I mean, it's, it's it's interesting to see what they do, but. We were obviously thinking, you know, they're going to do this to our car, which we've grown very attached to. And that's kind of where Mike is, or all of us are like, oh, man, we don't want to see this. So BMW then said to us, you know, guys, we really like your car, and we would like to keep it at the BMW Museum for the summer. So we thought, oh, that's great. You know, like, we then we'll be gone by the time all the crashing happens. And then subsequently, they've actually got hold of us and said, you know what, we would actually like to put your car in the classical museum forever. That's amazing. Yeah, so from that's... Cape Town all the way to Munich to sit in the Classical Museum forever, I think that's a pretty feel-good story. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what's next for you? Yeah, that, well, that happened in Berlin for <laughs> a couple of days after. I mean, we arrived on, on Sunday night, which was when Germany won the World Cup. Um, and half the German team were from Munich, so you can imagine what was going down there. Yeah. So you know, we certainly celebrated um, our arrival and our accomplishment. And um, yeah, the next the next little bit for me personally. Each of us have have our own um, own ideas and I suppose own path. But uh, I'm here in the UK, spending time with family, just catching up. Um, and then I'm going coming back to Cape Town, and I'll be focusing on a really exciting music project.